Hi friends. Yeah, I'm wearing the same outfit that I wore in my bronzer video. I'm sorry. As you can see, we're going into the tiny Pat McGrath palette. It has an official name. Let me grab the packaging, which I was so happy to discover no sequins. We appreciate that fam. Mini eyeshadow palette, Midnight Voyage. I wanted to say voyage, that would have been too much. Before we get started, hold on, let me grab the other palette. I don't know if you remember, but Pat released a mini palette a few years ago. It was named, what was the official name? My goodness, I'm looking at the packaging here. I don't have it, but this is what it looked like. It was cardboard and these were the shadows. We had six and now we got this little guy. I have to say, I like the the more condensed version found in Midnight Voyage versus this bigger format. And she also had her five shadow palettes in the plastic packaging and all that. But before we get into the details, my apologies fam. Hi, if this is your first time here, I'm Alicia, an online coach specializing in helping those create habits sustainably so we can live better without feeling deprived. And I also love to talk about the makeup, especially Pat McGrath. I have a lot of Pat McGrath tutorials, reviews here on my channel if you want to check out those i can link the playlist up above and down below in the description box everyone has seen this palette in action you probably don't even care what i think about it but anyway i wanted to still review it yes make comparisons between the original palettes that uh five out of the six are from there's one new shade and it has one of my most favorite shades what i think one of the most iconic shades out of the pat mcgrath labs eyeshadow mothership portfolio night creature this little one here is it as luxe as the other motherships absolutely not but i think that's a part of the demographic that the brand wanted to also cater to just for perspective this is what a, a mothership looks like this is a mothership five bronze seduction black lacquer case mirrored gold backing and 10 huge shadows a mixture of matte metallics blitz astral shades these specialized shades here that usually come in a quad in the palette they have a lot of shine a lot of glitz a lot of twinkle inkle and in midnight voyage we mostly have uh mattes and metallics specifically we got the two mattes and the three metallic shades I like the small size, I cannot lie. And I also love the fact that the mirror is a square, albeit not huge, but great for the brows, great for the eyes. Maybe you can kind of do, you know, find the right angle for the rest of your face. The reason I say that is because this is perfect just to nudge in my makeup bag. This is the Dagny Dover Mila. Mila Mila toiletry bag, which I talked about at length in a previous video. I could also link that up above if you like. But it's small enough to get in here and maybe unpopular opinion, I think an appropriate size for one person. Realistically, do we need all the eyeshadow? No, and if you like Pat McGrath, but you're not into the brand like that in investing, yeah, that's the, the word I'm using, in Pat's bigger mothership palace, then I think this is quite nice. Also, if you're not a fan of glitzy, super sparkly shades that pretty much are the stars in the bigger palettes and you're fine with the metallics and the mattes, then fantastic. How much did this look little guy costs. Let's see here. Midnight Voyage. $29. Suggests a shelf life of 18 months. And this little Midnight Voyage palette is made in Italy. Listen, it might be small, but it's made in Italy. Going through the swatches, of course, and we'll also lay out ways we can use this palette. I like, I like to do eyeshadow palette tutorials this way. You know, it's, I think it's helpful to you. Maybe not, I don't know, you could, you could tell me. I have the Linda Halberg primer on the eyes. I will also list what I have on my face down below with all those product details out the way. I think it's time for you to get in a little closer. That's enough. Let's get into the midnight voyage. Let's do a little bit of a quiz, shall we? As I mentioned, five out of the six shades are already in existing palettes. Shall we guess together what those are? <laughs> Starting with Skin Show Divine Glow. Where is Skin Show Divine Glow from? You guessed it. 
Bronze Deduction. One of the warmer shades because before Bronze Deduction was Decadence. And I think it was Sublime. No, my apologies. It was Subversive that had more of like that neutral champagne. Sublime had like the pink tone champagne skin show shade and Subliminal had more of the cooler champagne shade. So when Bronze Seduction came along, this leaned a little more gold champagne and we were like, yeah. Entrapment, you know where this is from. One of the three mattes found in Bronze Seduction. If you want, I can also swatch the original shade. I know we all love to see comparisons and textures. So this is the original Bronze Seduction. Entrapment was, is, is it this shade here? Hold on, no, that's disobedient, it, shame on me. Entrapment is here. Now this might swatch better because the pan is bigger and I was just able to get more of a better swirl there. And the skin show shade from the original palette looks to be pretty consistent with the one in the mini. We have a new shade, a new shade. Sunset Bronze, we love to see it. This is Pat's metallic formula, just very smooth. And you see here, it takes on a, a pinky hue, although bronze is like a pink copper shade. Beautifully shiny and smooth. Great to also wear solo and just buff through the crease if you needed just a one and done moment. Don't have to rely on a matte because these metallics are incredibly silky. You can burn bluff on the skin and will look very smooth. All right, Extreme Aubergine. Yes, bronze seduction again. An eggplant matte that, ooh, packs a lot of punch as we have seen in the original palette. So here's the original Extreme Aubergine. I just picked up more. I think that was, a, that was just a pickup issue. They both look pretty similar. Yeah, we'll get to uh, more comparisons when we apply those on the eyes. Next up, Eleganza. You know where this is from. Divine Rose 2. There it is. Eleganza is one of my most favorite shades out of the entire Pat McGrath collection. It's just, ooh, like that orchid, shiny, shiny. So beautiful. And the fact that it's in here with Extreme Aubergine, like this row right here, outrageously beautiful. And then you got the warmer thing going on up top. I see what she was doing. And lastly, we have to know. We have to know where Night Creature is from. I refuse to believe that you do not know. Fam, come on. Mothership 3, Subversive. And as it looks and feels, definitely on par with what exists in the original palette. You wanna know for sure, let me go get it. Hold on, stay right, don't go anywhere. I forgot if this is the newer one or my older one, but let's see, this is the original. They're, they're pretty the same, they're pretty the same. I picked up a lot from the mini because since it's a smaller pan, I wanted to go a little more swirl and twirl, but I think they're the same. You could let me know down below. So here are all the swatches with a few comparisons. I, I know I didn't do Eleganza, but Eleganza is the same. It's the same. Okay, so if this is your first time encountering Pat Shadows, welcome. So happy to have you. Pat's mattes pack a punch. That was hard to get out. They're very pigmented, a little on the drier side. So I would suggest you use an appropriate primer that will allow you to blend successfully through your crease. Some people like to lay down a press or loose powder to pick up any tackiness left behind or they feel that just offers up a smoother blend for them. I like to use a goat brush as it has a little more pushback and a little more aggressive in getting the pigments around on the lid. So when navigating this palette, you can can see we have the skin show shade that can be used on several portions on the eyes. For instance, we can use skin show as a highlight shade. Some people just like to place highlight on the inner corners of the eyes, some mascara, maybe a liner, maybe black coffee. Some highlight here 
on the brow bone yeah just to add a little bit of dimension and you could just slap divine show glow on the lid for a spotlight effect now granted depending on your skin tone it will look icier or more golden on me it looks more champagne gold so if you want to avoid it looking too frosty on the eyes if you're deeper complected than me then you probably can apply this on top of sunset bronze maybe for a little more uh, lighter flip on the reflect. Entrapment does pack a punch. I remember when using bronze seduction for the first time, people were excited because this was the first time that we got warmer mattes in one palette previously seen in subliminal sublime and subversive subversive had i think it was deep or dark Ooh, which one was it they were like in your face so there was a little more nuance here with these mats in bronze seduction even still entrapment serves okay with that said going in with my chikohoro gsn9 this is Sokoho Goat, I believe. I love this shade by itself, or you can place this all over the lid, whip it around, lid and crease, and it delivers such like a, a nice soft contoured look on the eyes. Great if you want it to just go all matte for the day. If you want it more intensity, you can go in with Extreme Aubergine on the lash line or tap some more product here on the outer corner. Do you feel like Entrapment is a little less aggressive in this palette than it is in the original? That's pretty. That blended very nicely, I have to say. Very silky, nice and even. I built it up a little bit because I just wanted you to see the color here. Excuse me while I just reach awkwardly trying to find a brush using this now under the eyes i like to wrap a mat around the eyes you know just so it could look more complete you don't have to place a mat under your lash line but i do like that effect of course you can go in with divine show on the lid or we can use sunset bronze this is so pretty we've seen this shade before not only in Pat McGrath per se, but in other brands. What I love about the Pat McGrath metallic formula, it's just how smooth it is. It has fantastic shine and it's just a breeze to apply. And when you do so on top of entrapment, it just enhances that bronziness to the, the look where I think further amplifies the color, yeah? And as I mentioned before, you can just lightly tap skin show right on the center. See how that's like almost like a spotlight effect on sunset bronze. You could also take sunset bronze here under the lash line. Yeah, just, you know, bring it all there. That's pretty simple. I mean, you can get easier than that. To briefly show, we can incorporate extreme aubergine into the look. I will now bring in my Bichotel brush. This is a eyeliner brush. It's on a stiffer side, but I think ideal for extreme aubergine. You gotta keep this shade in check. Keeping it tight to my lash line, applying it in a stamping technique, which I think makes it easy to control the placement. If you want, you can make a more prominent wing or you can just stamp the color along the lash line, stop it right at the edge, and you have a little more definition there on your lashes. Or you can go the typical route of applying entrapment through the crease and then tapping Extreme Aubergine on the outer color to deliver that smoky bracket. I would like to apply Eleganza first to show you how versatile these metallics are. And <laughs> this brush is bigger than the pan. This is my Chikohoro KZ6. Very big, fluffy brush. I went into more detail about my favorite shaders in my collection. I'll make sure to post that video in card and description box. But look how easy that was. You see what I'm saying? And I just adore the fact that we have Night Creature in the same palette because that means we can use Night Creature on the outer brackets of the eyes instead of using Extreme Aubergine. Like you don't have to use a matte with any of these looks. I am bringing Eleganza here. Ooh, I picked up too much on the lower lash line. 
Isn't that lovely? Now with Night Creature, first on the outer part of the lid. I feel when paired with Eleganza, you just have a beautiful matchup of magenta and like soft orchid. Would you say orchid or plum? Either way, the textures make it so simple to layer and they're so shiny, but they don't look overly textured on the lids. It's just, again, a beautiful gradient that you can easily achieve by layering both textures. And I just wanted to go in with metallics only just to show you can do that. You don't have to stick to just metallic matte, metallic matte all the time. I think it's fun to mix it up, see what you can get, and to have both Night Creature and Eleganza on one palette, you might not think is a big deal, but if you're a Pat fan, you know how outrageous that combination is. And to have it here, just this little... So here we have the first demo, Sunset Bronze on top of Entrapment. We have Eleganza with a little bit of Night Creature on the outer part of the eye. Let's take this off, try one more round, and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, let's go into another combination, shall we? Reapply the Linda Primer. Want to definitely see both Extreme Aubergine and Night Creature together. I think that'll be a fantastic combination. If you're not sure about Extreme Aubergine and the power that it contains, I would then go in, let's see here. I would first get a shader brush, some sort of fluffy, <laughs> fluffy shader. Tap into Extreme Aubergine and then concentrate that shade on the outer part of your lid. Place it there first. Don't worry about blending it through your crease. If you go in through your crease first, the color will get away from you quickly and you might find it difficult to diffuse. You could also go in with entrapment, but I think it'll be a lot of color to have on your lid. So maybe start with this first. You saw that I got really high here, totally fine. Without any additional product, take now a blender and just pull through the edges so you can soften that application. And then once you've done that, since you've already established the that arc through the crease, you can tap in a little more extreme aubergine and just build the color from there. And it was probably helpful that this brush had some leftover entrapment on it, so perhaps it did help kind of smooth out those lines, but there you have extreme aubergine. So I'm just gonna apply a little more here with my shader so it can appear more robust here on the outer corner. And I'm also applying here on the outer brackets of the lower lash line. Forgive the unevenness, evenness. I teared up a little bit with the removal of the shadow from round number one. No matter, as you saw, you could just lightly tap the edges just to kind of clean up that placement. Return with the blender of your choice and kind of whip those, whip those lines into shape. Now with Night Creature, I am taking my finger placing that on the majority of the lid first to get the color mostly on the lid and then we can use a shader smaller one to gently carve out how it applies on the lid so we can have like that crease cut there you could also use your finger to kind of dab the edges of that color but i like using a shader as it's a little more precise in the application and you can also bring it higher if you wanted. Yeah, just kind of whisk it through here. Sunset Bronze, why not on the inner lower lash line? I think that's a nice introduction. Just a warmer shade here in, you know, the magenta mix and plum things. Divine, Skin Show Divine Glow on the inner corner, of course. If you are deeper complected, you can probably use Sunset Bronze. Uh, as an inner corner highlight if you want to experiment with that shade. We got a little bit of fallout from uh, Night Creature. Expect this since it's a hardy shade, but it's all good. Just cleaning up here on the edge 
because again, the shadow caught my, uh, my tears. That was pretty easy to accomplish. I like how that turned out. And if you need it, you can dab on a little more night creature after everything's been blended. Sometimes when going in with a blender brush on top of a metallic, you can kind of pull away some of the shadow from the lid. So when everything's all said and done, you could just use your finger to tap a little more shine there on the lid for a more pigmentation. If you wanna see entrapment with Extreme Aubergine, then we can start off in the same manner with entrapment through the crease, picking up my same Chicohoto brush, again, GS09, or I keep saying 09, it's just nine, Alicia. I'm gonna whip that through. Actually, we can see how this looks with Eleganza. If you're not entirely sure, if you want to pair a warm shade like Entrapment to a, a cooler, plummiest shade like Eleganza, I think you can still do it successfully. Eleganza now with my finger. Ooh, this shade again. Just love the texture and the shine here. I think it goes quite nicely with Entrapment, I have to say. Just whipping through a little more matte here through the crease. A little more serving of eleganza. Oh God. Taking my shader like I did on the other side, cleaning up that application. We could take Sunset Bronze and place that on the outer part of the lid so it can be more of a gradient from that bronzy copper hue into eleganza. And I think that's a great transition. You could even whisk some through the crease if you wanted. And because I'm, I most likely will have this pencil on standby, gotta go in with black coffee. I think this is just a must with these shades, especially with entrapment. It's just perfectly pairs with black coffee. In fact, you could probably apply black coffee on the outer part of the lid, blend it out, and then use entrapment to be like that transition color to give it a little more smoke. And then we're smoothing out black coffee so it could appear more of a like a prominent wing here. All right, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna clean up my wing. I'm gonna make it a little sharper. You don't have to do this. I just cannot for the life of me, cannot get the angle right when it comes to blending out my, my eye pencil, but a trick you can use is apply concealer underneath with a very flat, stiff brush and just kind of manipulate the wing to how you want it uh, to shape so it doesn't look curved. I want mine to look a little more sharp, yeah? So you can definitely manipulate the end result by using a concealer and a stiff flat brush, go in with a little more judging, or you could go in with extreme aubergine on top of black coffee and just add a little more color there. If you want it to look more shadowy in nature, you can add that too. Staying here, or we can go in with Night Creature just on the entire lower lash line, yeah inviting a different color altogether. I think nice, especially since we went super warm on the top and now you have like this magenta shock at the bottom. And of course, for consistency's sake, let's place Skin Show Van Glow on the inner corner. I love Sunset Bronze and Eleganza together. They work so well. You don't have to stick to either just the bottom or top column. You know, you could really mix and match and no matter how you do it, you're gonna get a beautiful look. Oh, and last tip before we go, if you happen to have any of Pat's under eye blurring powder nearby, you can use that to finish off your eye look. So for here, if you want an extreme aubergine to appear softer, after all shadow has been applied, you could just lightly whip the blurring powder on the edges and it will gently manipulate the blend where it's just a little more gradient, softer and finish. And it has a little bit of sheen too because the powder has that luminosity for under eye setting. So, and I have this powder with my other travel makeup items or travel makeup items of choice here. So I thought, why not just da da da? Cause this is the last demo. I'll slap on some lashes for the finale 
And with that said, I'll be back here in a minute. Here is the final look fam from Demo 2. Have to say, I think this little palette is great. Yes, it's not gonna be for everyone. I do think the shades, although lovely, not as nuanced as, let's say, the Viseart Solstice a Petite Pro palette. Totally different brands, totally different intention, right? But if you're more like this, versus this, then I totally get it. You got a little more gradation here. This is just like pow, pow, pow. Like even entrapment could pack a punch depending on your skin tone, but I'm happy Extreme Aubergine is here as an opportunity to create smoke and intensity if you like, whether it be in this manner or as a wing liner moment. To quickly compare it to uh, this little palette here, I would say, yes, they're very similar, right? This, I believe it's called, let me grab Paradiso. I think Paradiso has a little more red in it, whereas Entrapment, I think more neutral. Yeah, so this is Paradiso, this is Entrapment. Just to quickly show you, Entrapment definitely looks more neutral in undertone than Paradiso. I'll swatch this shade here and this shade here. So this one reminds me of Sunset Bronze. So let me quickly swatch Sunset Bronze just so we can so we can get a better idea. So Sunset Bronze is a little more coppery in undertone and Amnesia, is it? No. Lessin, I think that's Lessin. Lessin kind of reminds me of Eleganza, except maybe there's a little more plum, and Eleganza much cooler than Lessin, right? So that is Eleganza, you have Lessin, you have Sunset Bronze. I wanted to do Amnesia, compare it to Night Creature. Amnesia, definitely a little more cooler. Let's see here. So that's Amnesia. I'll quickly now switch Night Creature. Night Creature definitely has a little more sparkly arcly than Amnesia. And I think Night Creature is a little more magenta, a little more eggplant in Amnesia. And of course you got Liquid Sun, you got the gold shade, and you have this one here, Afterglow, which is more yellow than Skin Show Divine Glow. So again, that's Afterglow, and here's Divine from Midnight Voyage. So there are similarities between the two. If you happen to have this palette, sure, you don't necessarily need this one, but I just love the size of Midnight Voyage. I'm thrilled that it's that small. I just think it's convenient, it's easy, more digestible for someone who wants to get into Pat McGrath but doesn't want to do this. You see what I'm saying? If I had to pick between the two, I think I will have to come back on here and apply them on camera just to get a better feel. Although they're the same overall, I like that you have Extreme Aubergine as your intense shade. It having that plum undertone, I think it shakes things up a bit. But you know, people are like, listen, just give me my black shadow and leave me alone. You got dark matter in here for adjusting intensity as you like, outer bracket all over the lid. How if you could just put this all over and call it a day. And there's nothing like a black matte eyeshadow look that is beyond appropriate for any occasion, okay? Going to the grocery store, all the way to New Year's Eve party, the opportunities are there. These two are very similar, so that's what I feel this has an advantage over because we only have one beige shade. We don't even have a golden here. Whoa, for Pat McGrath. You do have Eleganza, Sunset Bronze, and Night Creature that I think are different enough. Whereas again, in this palette, you have these two that are like medium gold and light gold. But here you got the more beigey shade for highlighting purposes. Eleganza, like that cooler plum shade, Night Creature, Magenta, Sunset Bronze, Coppery Pink, the Entrapment Matte for your neutral brown shading, contouring for the crease, and Extreme Aubergine for whatever you want to use it for. Those are my brief comparisons. Much prefer the smaller format here. I like that I can just slip it in a smaller makeup bag and have endless opportunities to create great looks, as you saw, ranging from basic everyday to wow pout in your face. You have the dial in your hands and you are capable of creating just a slew of different looks, different vibes and feel with, I think, great textures 
on top of that, right? Like the shine, fam beautiful let me know if you picked up midnight voyage again i'm sure you've seen plenty of reviews on this palette i still wanted to come on here because i love talking pat mcgrath making comparisons and just getting into the thrill of it i'll see you down in the comments and until then fam that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial pat mcgrath mothership by little palette extravaganza mothership 10 is coming <laughs> or monthly faves take care and i will see you again soon